So what is a cluster? Everybody has a different impression of this. If you ask folks if, if their neighborhood has a lot of cancer, they might think, we have a cluster here. Look, on my block, three people have cancer. And then you find out that, well, yes, there's an elderly man here who has lung cancer, who's been a lifetime smoker. There are a couple of cases of, of common cancers like prostate cancer or breast cancer. And then maybe even a rare cancer where, the, oh, look, there's someone down the block who died of a brain tumor. Those are very different diseases. First off, cancer is, is a group of hundreds of different diseases. What makes a real cluster? Well, things can cluster in time. So imagine in a given week, a doc sees three new cases of a rare disease. That's a cluster. That's highly unlikely. It's way above the, the incidence. So you have time, you have space. So within, say, a workplace, or within a small community. In the case of Rutherford that I spoke about, we had a school where we had cases within that school, very unusual, where you would expect a case maybe every 10 years to see them cluster in time and space. That's a cluster. So when a question comes in about cancer in a community, which it does very often, uh, as you know, cancer is one of the leading causes of death in disease in, uh, in, a, in a population that's aging and that in which we've done a lot of work to combat the acute causes of mortality like infectious disease. Uh, and so now many people have questions about cancer in their community or in their workplace or in some other setting. Our role is really to work with the other branches of the state health department and local health departments to help frame that question and determine whether there really is some kind of problem with cancer in a particular area that could be considered unusual. Um, one of the things that we've dealt with a lot is this question of cancer clusters. And clustering, uh, from our point of view and from a statistical point of view, is something that happens where there's an excess or more of a particular type of cancer, kind of cancer, or some other attribute of cancer that's unusual compared with the general population. But one in three, that's a really common disease or group of diseases. So defining a cluster really involves a lot of science. Is it a rare disease? Are we seeing it on, in unusual folks, perhaps at a younger age than we would normally see it? Are we seeing it clustered in time? You know, in one year we have five cases and we would normally expect one case every five years. Are we seeing it um, in close proximity to things that might increase risk? So there's lots of considerations that go into that. So one of the things we spend a lot of time with is talking to people right up front about what exactly is their question? How do they understand this concern about cancer? How, many, how big is the area that they're talking about? Um, and then we tried also to understand, is there something unusual about this group of people? Do they have an unusual exposure to something that is different than the community as, as a whole? Um, uh, some of the questions that we deal with, for example, from an environmental point of view uh, are, is their source of drinking water unusual in some respects? Are they on city water, public water supply? Are they on well water? Um, are, do they live near an air pollution source of some kind that is unusual compared with the general population? Uh, do they live near a particular kind of factory? Do they live in an area that we know has a high level of hazardous air pollutants? Um, so we spend time understanding both the context of the question about the cancer and about possible sources of exposure. You know, another important challenge, again, not unique to, to this evaluation, but to a lot of the work that we do is there isn't a bright line for when we can make a determination about public health implications from an exposure. The um, medical and toxicological literature is largely based on occupational experiences or laboratory data on animals or cell lines at very high doses. We know that community members are usually exposed to much lower levels. But we, you know, again, we make these extrapolations on what that could mean and do the best we can with the information available. There's uncertainty in every part of what we do. We try to, we, one of the obligations we have when we make these conclusions is to try to spell out what, what were the uncertainty 
uh, components of our review. Um, we we do our best to to to, to make the exposure as co assumptions as conservative as possible. So we say if it's if this was as as bad as it was, would that be high enough that we would expect to see a problem. And if, and if we think that that's unlikely, that's what we'll say. But if we think there's, there's a chance that some, perhaps sensitive individuals or others, could have had a problem from that exposure, we'll say that too.